record numbers of Americans are getting vaccinated against the coronavirus. <gasps> it's vaccination day. It's vaccination day. The U.S., the most vaccinated large nation in the world. Dozens of countries are now working to vaccinate their populations in an effort to end the global pandemic. Today I get my COVID jab and I'm feeling really fab. President Biden says that by the end of his first 100 days, the United States is aiming to have administered 200 million doses. And by May 2021, every American adult who wants one will be eligible to get in line for a shot. The months I have been waiting for this day. But that said, 30% of U.S. adults still don't want to get the COVID vaccine, but they may not have much of a choice. The federal government can, can require vaccination and things like that for coming in and out of the country. And both the state and city can have vaccine laws based on um, their legislative authority. When can I get my second shot? And will it hurt or will it not? So can you actually be forced to take the COVID vaccine against your will in the United States. To be clear, the White House's chief medical advisor has already said that he doesn't think the federal government will ever make the COVID vaccine mandatory. Oh, I think I am gonna be okay. It's just a spoon in right? However, powers at the city and state level, not to mention the legal rights granted to employers under U.S. labor law, may make it pretty difficult for some Americans to evade inoculation against the coronavirus. And for the people who don't want it and still refuse to take. This isn't as unprecedented as you might think. There are a lot of required inoculations which are easy to take for granted. Well, thanks to you, now I don't have to wait. But while schools have been requiring vaccines since the mid-19th century, states didn't explicitly have that same power to roll out universal inoculation rules for all residents for another 50 years. Because for the first time in forever, I might get to kill. Girl. It's been a long time. In 1905, the Supreme Court case of Jacobson versus Massachusetts set the legal precedent, which now allows states to require vaccines. When I get my AstraZeneca, I'm gonna tell the whole damn world, guys, I'm vaccinated. In general, these things are done at the state level, but big cities, for example, also have vaccine laws. When I was the city health commissioner in Washington, D.C., although that certainly functions as a state, uh, we also have vaccine laws in, the, in Washington, D.C. So far, no cities or states have made the COVID vaccine mandatory, though some places have started the conversation. But no one acting crazy. Well, the federal government doesn't mandate vaccines. Um, what they do is they make recommendations. But no one acting crazy. There are, however, softer powers at the federal level that have been used before to incentivize mass inoculation. If you're a truck driver that drives across state, maybe the federal government can mandate that you'll be vaccinated. But no one acting crazy. The power of the purse is another key tool in Washington's arsenal. But no one acting crazy. It can pass a law saying states will give you $3 million if you mandate the vaccine, but that's up to a limit. It can't do it to the degree that's coercive. Crazy. The federal government could also, theoretically, impose it as a condition of getting a passport. So states and cities can require vaccines, and the federal government has a lot of influence as well. But the big question is whether the government will actually go through with rolling out a universal mandate. But no one acting crazy. The first challenge is we won't have enough vaccine doses for people who want them. You can't require vaccines that's not available that people can't get. Another major factor to consider, none of the three COVID vaccines in circulation here in the U.S. are fully licensed by the FDA. When I get my AstraZeneca. Instead, they are all cleared under something known as an emergency use authorization or an EUA. Until they are officially approved, mandates seem to be off the table. And keep in mind, if any city or state did implement a mandate, the kinds of repercussions we're talking about are relatively tame. No one is floating the idea of jail time or coming to your house and holding you down while they administer a shot. Refusal would probably just mean a fine or maybe some sort of other tax or penalty. Experts say it may also mean you are barred from entry to concerts or can't book a seat on certain airlines. In Israel, for example, they use the green passport to allow access to businesses like hotels and restaurants to those who have been vaccinated against the virus or have already had COVID-19. While this is in part a PR tactic, a PR tactic, a PR tactic, a PR tactic. I'm gonna tell the whole damn world. Guys, I'm vaccinated. 
While this is, in part, a PR tactic, it's also totally within an employer's rights to roll out this kind of requirement. Legal experts say private businesses have pretty extensive rights. Requiring a vaccine is a health and safety work rule. So there's precedent that, under the law, an employer can force an employee to get vaccinated, and if they don't, fire them. So there's precedent that, under the law, an employer can force an employee to get vaccinated, and if they don't, fire them. Days that employees could apply to be exempt from a blanket requirement. Anti-discrimination laws also provide some protections. And for the people who don't want it and still refuse to take. Now, other employers think that incentives are the better route to widespread inoculation in the workplace. That could mean that if you get the vaccine, you don't have to wear the same level of PPE in the office or have your temperature taken every day. I might get to kiss a girl. There's also talk of offering financial perks. Many of my clients who are struggling with this issue have said, well, while we think it's a good idea to make it mandatory, we are going to make it voluntary, but we're going to try to offer economic incentives, bonuses, uh, as well as paying for the vaccination. Oh, I think I am going to be okay. Also, because an EUA is not a license, there is a legal question as to whether you can mandate an emergency authorization. Well, they're not a fully licensed product. So the ability to f to require your employee to be vaccinated will be highly controversial. In fact, I would argue that um, an employer cannot require you to be vaccinated um, with anything other than a fully licensed product. Cannot require you to be vaccinated. Um, an employer cannot require you. An employer cannot. An employer cannot. An employer cannot. Employer cannot require you. Months I have been waiting for this day. Mandatory vaccination protocols, therefore, may have to wait until the FDA completes the entire approval process for the COVID vaccines. I think I am gonna be okay. Pfizer and Moderna built their COVID vaccines with a new kind of technology that's never before been licensed in the U.S. When can I get my second shot? And will it hurt or will it not? And for the first time in forever, I won't live in fear. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God.